Hello everybody, this is going to serve as a review for some of the material that we're working with in chapter 5.2 and 5.3. I'm going to go through a very straightforward FNET problem that involves friction and I'm also going to do an equilibrant problem. To start, I'm going to have a 10 kilogram block that's sitting on a horizontal surface the question ultimately is going to be how hard do I have to push with an applied force over on this side FA in order to start this block moving I'm gonna have the information that the coefficient of static friction is equal to 0 0.3 and in fact on a later part of the problem I'm gonna use the coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.2 let me go ahead and finish my free body diagram I know that there's an FG equal to MG going straight down for this box. Given that it is a 10 kilogram box, that means that my FG is going to be equal to negative 98 newtons. I know that I'm going to have a normal force in FN up here that's going to be equal to positive 98 newtons to balance that in the Y direction. I have stated that I have an applied force coming from the left hand side pushing to the right friction is going to always oppose motion or intended motion and so I have a friction force there now if part A of this problem is to discover how hard I have to push in order to get the box moving the first thing that we should do is we should solve for the maximum static friction I'm gonna be able to use this equation that says that the friction from the static friction is less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. If I'm interested in the maximum friction that I can get out of this system, then I'm going to go ahead and change the less than or equal to sign into an equals. And so I'm going to have the friction force equal to mu s times the normal force. I'll plug in the numbers that I know. This is going to be a 0 0.3, that's a unitless number, times 98 newtons. My friction force is going to come out to be 29.4 newtons. That shows me the magnitude of my friction force. I have to use my free body diagram up there to decide the uh, actual direction of it and if I want to say to the right is the positive direction then ultimately I will say that that friction force is a negative 29.4 at this point you could just make a leap uh, through logic and say that if I want to actually start this box moving I have to overcome that static friction and I have to push harder than 29.4 newtons It doesn't matter much to me how you actually write that out but I will say that the applied force is going to be greater than 29.4 newtons and that will allow me to actually briefly get something that is for an instant uh, have a net force in the horizontal direction that would start accelerating this box in part B of the problem I'm gonna say that the box is accelerating at I'm just gonna tell us that it's accelerating at 1.5 meters per second squared and if the box is accelerating at that rate I would like to know how hard do I need to push what is the applied force in order to keep that acceleration now what's interesting about this problem is I need to reevaluate my friction force however the bulk of the free body diagram is going to stay the same I'm going to calculate the friction force associated with this I'm going to use the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force since this box is moving and I will find that the frictional force due to kinetic friction is equal to this 0 0.2 uh, coefficient times the normal force was still 98 newtons and that leaves me with the kinetic friction equal to 19.6 newtons again I'm I'm gonna ultimately tag that with a minus sign because it's pointing to the left I'll go up here and write that down that it's negative 19.6 newtons 
Now that I know the friction force, I can go ahead and start an F-net problem. Remember, if you know the acceleration, you should start with the Newton's second law that says mass times acceleration. In this case, my F-net is going to be equal to the 10 kilogram mass multiplied by 1.5 meters per second squared. That means that my F-net is going to be equal to 15 Newtons. From there, I can switch over and I can do a sum of forces. I'm not too worried about the things that are happening in the vertical direction. I just needed the normal force to find the friction. So my sum of forces will look like this. I have the applied force that I'm trying to figure out. What is my applied force in order to achieve this acceleration? Plus the friction force that's going to have a minus sign associated with it. 15 newtons that I solved from before is going to be equal to my unknown applied force minus 19.6 newtons. I can solve for that and find that the applied force would have to be 34.6 newtons. And that's my answer. For my last problem, I'm going to do a quick equilibrant problem. My problem setup could be something like I have an object that's being pulled on on four different sides. I'm keeping the math very straightforward in this problem so that we can focus more on the conceptual understanding. There are these four forces all pulling either directly horizontal or vertical. And I want to know what is the fifth force that's not actually drawn on my diagram, but what is the fifth force that I would have to apply to the system for the F net to be equal to zero. Remember the strategy that we talked about for solving these is first let's figure out what the overall force is for the known forces. So I'm going to find F net for these four forces that I have listed here. You'll see that I can write down the X component of the resultant will be a positive three newtons minus one newton so I've looked at this guy and this guy now. That's going to be an XR equal to 2 newtons. In the Y direction, I have that component for the resultant is equal to a positive 4 newtons minus 2 newtons, which of course gives me a YR equal to positive 2 newtons. I'm going to go over and I'm going to reconstruct a triangle that uses the this information. I have an X component that has a value of 2. I have a Y component that also has a value of 2 newtons. Again, I'm trying to keep the math very straightforward. This allows us to see that I have a resultant vector that's going to move up in this direction. I will look at the angle here and I will find that that angle, this is a special triangle, so I'm able to say that this is a 45 degree angle although I could always use an inverse trig function to find that. Given that I happen to have selected an angle that is also equal to the global angle, I can immediately go and say my global angle is equal to 45 degrees measuring from east. I will find the magnitude of the resultant vector there using the Pythagorean theorem and I have 2 squared is 4 plus 2 squared is 4. My resultant is going to have a magnitude equal to the square root of 8. And we said that that is at a global angle of 45 degrees. Remember that the equilibrant is going to be the force vector that is equal and opposite to the resultant. And so I'm going to say the equilibrant is equal to equal magnitude but opposite direction. In order to find the opposite direction I'm going to just add 180 degrees to this angle and I'm going to find that I am at 225 degrees. This is my final answer. That is the equilibrant. Let's see if we can make sure this makes sense to us. If I come up and I look at my resultant, so now I'm going back to the diagram, you can see that I have excess force in the x direction, I have excess force in the y direction. The resultant of these vectors points off in this direction. However, that is the combination of my four known forces. And remember, the equilibrant is the single force that would put this into static equilibrium. And so 
my equilibrant is in the opposite direction, has the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. And so the four black forces plus this red one would bring the system into static equilibrium, where this is 228 or excuse me, 225 degrees, and it has a magnitude of square root of 8. I hope that helps everybody out with some of the material we've been working with. As always, take another look at the video if you need some help, but otherwise, let your computer know you got it.